The historic Savanac Nursery was established in 1907. The Forest Service was only two years old when forester Ehlers Koch passed through here on his honeymoon. He was riding past with his bride when he saw this abandoned homestead by a German settler named Savanac. The first supervisor of the Lolo National Forest thought it a perfect spot for a tree nursery. The Savanac seedlings would be used to replace trees that were harvested through logging. 1908, our first seedlings were planted, and two years later was the Great Burn, the 1910 fire. The fire killed 87 people. It burned entire towns. It took Savanac too. The only thing that remained were the seedlings that were irrigated that were planted in 1908. After the fire, those seedlings were needed more than ever. The nursery expanded. By 1916, on annual, there's three million seedlings that came from Savanac that were dispersed across Montana, Idaho, into Wyoming. The East Arboretum showcases several tree species, including a 1910 fire survivor, Ehlers Koch's beloved western larch. The Ehlers Koch tree that will provide us cones to collect seeds to plant across Montana and Idaho. By the Great Depression, the nursery expanded even more. The Civilian Conservation Corps came to Savanac. Young men grew, harvested, and planted millions of trees. This bridge was constructed by the CCC in 1936. They built the structures you see here today. Robert Webb is a lead volunteer overseeing the grounds. This building is the original administration building. It currently holds a museum and is a visitor center. Historic cottages are available for rent. These were built by the CCC in the uh, 30s and early 40s. A statue named Iron Mike honors the CCC at the entrance. And these are the young guys that we needed to plow the fields, build our roads, and build, make our buildings. The Savanac Nursery closed in 1969. Seedlings are now grown in Coeur d'Alene, but Savanac has a new mission. As a recreation and heritage site. After the nursery closed, timber and trail crews and the Young Adult Conservation Corps used the site. But through the years, it began to fall into disrepair. Napweed was coming in. Uh, windows were being broken out of the buildings. In the 80s and 90s, Savanac enlisted volunteers to keep the grounds and buildings up and to greet visitors. Carol Johnson spearheaded the project. We just started with a bucket of paint. Savanac is one of those places that that just pulls you in and makes you want to be a part of it. The history of the site uh, very closely mirrors the history of our agency. Uh, the history of the CCC, the history of fire. It's popular with school kids. Superior Schools has brought their sixth grade class up here for over 50 years and has been a pilot program in the state of Montana for outdoor education. But Savanac's infrastructure is antiquated. We've been approved through the Great American Outdoors Act for some major work here that's going to do, take care of deferred maintenance. Savanac will get a new well and wastewater system. Carol says it helps guarantee a new chapter for Savanac. For families to spread out and enjoy uh, the peacefulness and the, the beauty. One of Savanac's most peaceful spots is this garden. The 1910 Memorial Garden that was planted by the CCCers. There are 78 trees planted, one for each firefighter that lost their lives in the 1910 fire. The CCC this gave this rock to Savanac to honor CCC. those firefighters. At its base grow irises that originated from the old homestead so many years ago. Walk the grounds of Savanac and of course are struck just how stunning it is, but also what a great gift it was and continues to be for conservation. It makes you want to plant a tree. Kevin Mackey, NBC Montana.